Hello there, integrated science students, and welcome to our third video lesson here for Unit 2, all about Earth's internal processes. And for Lesson 3, we're going to examine the Earth's interior. The video topics that we're going to cover include the layers or structure and composition of those layers for planet Earth. Okay? And the second topic we're going to cover is how we know. Okay? What information, what has happened, what data have we gathered, what inferences have we made to know exactly or theorize the actual internal layers and their composition for our planet. Many scientists believe that early Earth formed from meteorites that were slamming together over billions of years ago. Uh, so over time, the metallic material that was present in these meteorites kind of shook out from one another, okay? They were able to separate out from one another with the denser materials collecting down towards the center of early Earth and the less dense, lighter materials gathering towards the outer edges of early Earth. Really, Earth's internal layers, structure, composition is all about density, okay? It's all about density, a little bit about temperature, but a lot about density. Starting at the outermost layer, we have what we call the crust. A big, thick, rocky layer anywhere from 2 to 200 kilometers in thickness. In terms of the Earth, though, if we were to create an analogy, it's about the thickness of the actual skin on an apple. If the apple was to represent the Earth, and the crust would be the skin. Okay? So it's not very thick. It may seem thick when we say 200 kilometers, but these gigantic chunks of rock are actually pretty small beans compared to the enormous size of our planet. The crust is very rocky and it's composed of a lot of silicates or silicon and oxygen bonded molecules. Right below the crust we have what we call the lithosphere. The lithosphere is the crust and the uppermost part of the mantle. So we're kind of cross layering here. Crust down the mantle but we also have another term that describes the crust and the uppermost part of the mantle and that's the lithosphere. As we get further down into the mantle, we reach a plasticky layer, a thin plastic-like layer that we call the asthenosphere. And that's the layer on which the tectonic plates float upon. So, the tectonic plate is actually the crust and just a little bit of the mantle. All right, we call them lithospheric tectonic plates. All righty. And they float on true mantle that we call the asthenosphere, which is a plasticky-like um, layer of the mantle. So we're down in the mantle now, and now the mantle, although it's been broken up into lithosphere a little bit and its thinosphere, we break the mantle up into two chunks known as the upper mantle and the lower mantle, and they really differ um, from each other based upon uh, composition. Okay, As we get further and further down into the mantle, the lower mantle, as we get closer to the core, we start to see uh, other elements such as calcium and aluminum, a little bit heavier metals uh, than our silicates. The outer core is a liquidy layer. It's so gosh darn hard down there towards the center of our planet that the outer core is actually liquid. Where the inner core is solid. So, 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 so condensed down there because of gravity that the inner core is actually solid. So we've got the outer core and then the inner core and both of them are very rich in metals such as iron and nickel and we see a little bit of oxygen and a little bit of sulfur as well. So in review, the layers of the earth can be simply put as crust, mantle, outer core, inner core. But we've also got some terms that kind of bridge the gap between some of the layers, like the lithosphere, which is the crust and just a little bit of the mantle, the asthenosphere, which is the very outer edge of the mantle, and then the mantle. The big thick mantle can be broken up into the upper mantle and lower mantles. Now, how do we know? How do we know that these layers actually exist and are composed of the materials that we're talking about? That they are the thicknesses that we speak of? That they are the temperatures that we speak of? Again, no such thing as direct observation for these. We have to rely on inferences and theories that we develop from other direct observations of some of those naturally occurring phenomenons like volcanoes and most notably earthquakes. Earthquakes give us a ton of data to help us learn more about Earth's internal structure. To really start understanding though 
our understanding or our how we understand Earth's internal um, structure, we have to look at wave behavior. Because again, we're studying the seismic waves that earthquakes give off in order to study Earth's internal layers and composition. So we have to understand how those waves may behave if they interact with different uh, states of matter or if they interact uh, with different uh, temperatures, all right, or how they adjust when, when covering certain amounts of area. There are four major interactions or ways that waves can behave. They can be uh, absorbed, all right, they can be transferred or transmitted, transmission. They can be bent, which is refraction, or they can be reflected, which is boom, thrown backwards. Okay? Uh, the major ones that we're going to look at are refraction and absorption. Okay? Um, early on, we were studying a lot of this earthquake behavior, and we started to notice that uh, certain seismographs were not picking up the S waves that were radiating away from the focus of an earthquake. From this information, we were able to deduce that the outer core was indeed composed of liquid, that S waves could not travel through the liquid state of matter. Not only that, but we were noticing that the P waves were not necessarily being received at the points we thought they would be received. So if an earthquake was to happen here, we thought the P wave would show up here. It was showing up a little bit off center. So not only did we have the S waves being absorbed, hinting towards us that the hinting to us that the outer core was liquid, but we also had the P waves being refracted or bent. So waves can be transmitted, just go through. Okay, transmission means the passing of a wave with really no um, inhibition. All right, nothing stopping it. Okay, it has not been inhibited at all. All right. Uh, we also have absorption, which is what was happening in the outer core with S waves. Those S waves were being absorbed, and they weren't going anywhere. Okay? We have refraction, which means uh, what we saw in the outer core with the P waves from an earthquake. They were being bent, and they were arriving at a point which we didn't expect. And then the last one is reflection, whereas if maybe the P waves would hit one of those core layers and bounce back at us at a certain point. Really no reflection going on here, just a lot of those first three for wave behaviors. We also noted a lot, uh, noticed a lot about the uh, speed alterations for these waves after an earthquake, and that that's what gave us uh, um, insight into this uh, idea of discontinuity, to where we actually have these distinct layers. Okay, So discontinuity is a term basically used to reference how um, the Earth's crust, the Earth's mantle, the Earth's outer core and inner core have distinct, distinct lines or lineations or differences between the two. There is a point in time when we are going from one to the next, not really a blending. We finally see a difference in characteristics enough to say, this is where this layer stops and this one begins. That's discontinuity. Um, shadow zones are another term that's mentioned in this section uh, that we mention and talk about a little bit. And uh, shadow zones are essentially talking about <clears throat> that area where we were not receiving any S waves at different seismograph stations, and that's because they were indeed being absorbed by the outer core. So it was another uh, phenomenon that we had stumbled over that gave us further explanation and understanding into the Earth's internal structure. Um, hmm, I think that about does it for this video. Closing on 10 minutes here, so we'll wrap this up. Hopefully you understand the general structure of the planet, crust, mantle, outer core, inner core, and again, kind of where the lithosphere and asthenosphere come into play. And uh, hopefully you have a better understanding of how we arrive to understanding the actual layers, because we can't cut the Earth in half and study it from afar. Okay? It's a lot of seismographic information, looking at and analyzing primary and secondary waves, and the way that they behave as they pass through different states of matter, different distances, and different substances or temperatures. Okay? That's about it for this video. See you guys in class.